Welcome to Brothers of the Word, because brother, you need the Word. And this is the third and final part of the Lord's Prayer. Part one was sermon number 5481, and it was entitled, The Verse After. And this had to do with, it was the only verse that Jesus commented on the Lord's Prayer, Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15. And Jesus said, for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So part one, the verse after, dealt with that if you're going to pray the Lord's Prayer, you have to forgive people. Because if you don't forgive people, God cannot forgive you. Part two was entitled, It's Not My Prayer. And basically, that talked about there's nothing in the Lord's Prayer that is individual. If you read and know the Lord's Prayer, everything is us and everything is our. There's nothing that is me, there's nothing that is mine, there's nothing that is I. And Jesus was telling us to pray not so much just for ourselves, but to pray for others inclusively. So today, I'm going to deal with a third and final aspect of the Lord's Prayer as hopefully this series will take us out of our childish prayers because sometimes children will pray prayers that are actually rather immature. Even some of them will say some things that may appear rather humorous to them, but, but it's actually got a lot of truth in reality. One child was simply saying, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us some email. <laughs> and another said, and forgive us our trash passes as we forgive those who passed trash against us. <laughs> and actually that's kind of true about all that trash passing. That if God can forgive us our trash passing, then we can forgive others who done passed trash against us. And part three of the Lord's Prayer is simply entitled, Before You Ask. Jesus told us to do something before we ask. Oftentimes we will skip the way and the manner that Jesus has told us to pray, and we go right into the asking part. Can you imagine how it is just you as, do you know how it is? Some of you have some people and every time you see them, you all know what I'm about to say. Every time you see them, they want something from you. And you know it, the minute you lay eyes on them, that you know all they want is something from you. And you know they're gonna come up to you, give me this, give me that, Help me with this. You know that for the most part, the minute you see them, and, and even if they give you something, you know, you know, sometimes they say people will give you stuff and it's got a string attached to it. Some, I don't even like to take stuff from some folk because it doesn't even have a string to attach. It's got a rope and some <laughs> chains attached to it. And you know if they give you a cup of coffee, they want a whole coffee plantation back. So, so sometimes you can understand how God feels if every time he hears from you, all you're doing is asking him for stuff. Every time there's a word that comes up to heaven that, that, will, that will grace his ears from your lips, every time God hears from you, all it has to do, you asking him, pleading him, begging him for stuff. And if we follow the pattern that Jesus has told us, has given us to pray. There was a part that he told us before we ask. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's what he told us to pray before we ask. We need to understand what Jesus said to pray before we ask. And, and the first three things of the Lord's Prayer deal with the majesty of God, the purpose of God, 
and the will of God, the majesty of God, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And when you study into what the word hallowed mean, hallowed mean to set it apart, to set it above, to make it first. It is separated, unique. It is consecrated. When something is hallowed, it's not ordinary. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We, we've got to learn how to put God separate above everything else in our lives. First, our Father, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Before you go asking for all this stuff, before you go crying and whining and begging and belly aching to God, put God as head of your life, get him off the tail end, put him up front, put him above, separate him, hallowed him so everything shines down from above with God in your life and you find some things will start turning around and some change. And God, God will take and change schedules. He'll influence people. Stuff will go to happen with you that you don't even understand. Just put God head. Hallowed be thy name. Our Father. And, and people, when you understand and just understand our Father, when you have God as your Father who owns the cattle on a thousand hills and, and then owns the hills, when you have God as your Father, what is it that he cannot give you? But there is plenty that he will not give you. Now, there's a difference in that. But God wants you to have what is best for your life. You are the child of God. And because you are his child, even when you don't deserve it, because you are his child, God wants the very best for you. And, and Jesus, Jesus said, look, he, he said, he said, look, if, if the evil men, he said, if they won't give snakes to their children, but only want good things for their children, what do you think the heavenly father wants for his children. I know without question that God wants the best for me. But I have to recognize the majesty of God. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father, I set you above. I set you apart. I set you over. I set you as head of my life. Thy kingdom come. The purpose of God. God wants the kingdom of heaven in your life. God wants you in heaven. And, and when a father wants the child in heaven and wants the best for the child, then you understand that everything God orchestrates in my life is for my good. It may not feel good, but it is for my good. And see, this is where we as children often get things so confused, twisted up, and misunderstood. Because it doesn't feel good, we think that it is not for our good. And finally, thy will be done. The will of God, when we understand that we often will not understand the will of God. God is complicated. I recognize that plenty of times. God is complicated. He says it in his word. I had a situation once where God had spoken something to me and it didn't come to pass like I thought came to pass, but it was totally twisted from what I figured. So I understand that I don't understand. And I understand that the will of God may be beyond stuff that I will ever be able to comprehend. 
But I understand that the will of God is beneficial for me if I just do the word of God. 